I'm blaming you for this too, Elias. Hey, what's up, you guys? Silent Violet here, and yes, welcome back to another episode of I Can't Escape Has Been Hotel or Hell of a Boss. All right, to be fair, a lot of my channel has been focused on Hell of a Boss lately, but that's kind of due to like the timing of when these videos come out and every time I'm about to film something a new episode of Hell Boss just comes out. Not to mention the only other thing I was doing just as often on my channel as Hell of a Boss stuff was BTS stuff. To be fair though because of the pandemic and because of Yoongi's surgery they haven't really been doing like a lot a lot at least a lot of stuff that I feel like I could you know react to on my channel other than what I've recently done which I feel is you know a good way to get kind of back into the the norm of things but yeah I was kind of realizing that a lot of my focus has been on hell of a boss lately I haven't really been doing much in terms of has been related content which to be fair makes sense considering that the only has been related content out there is the pilot which you know, we already did something related to that. There are, of course, the Honeycasts, but um, while they are husband related, everything in there is pretty explicitly stated to be non canon, unless stated canon by Vivzy Pop herself when she has guest starred on the stream. So, yeah, in terms of actual canon, you know, husband related content, we've got the pilot, we've got Attic, which again, already done two videos on, and we have the comics, which I've already read. But looking past that, there are a lot of has been related stuff out there in the works of the fandom. There's a lot of fan art, there's a lot of cosplayers, and that leads me to Lysak, also known as Zedly Vu, who I follow and I think is amazing. She is probably one of the best, if not the best, in my humble opinion, again, opinion, Alistair cosplayers that I have seen on any platform. And yes, that not only includes Demon Alistair, but also Human Alistair. She's also very sweet, she does Twitch stream, she's great, and that's why I totally recommend you guys check her out. But the reason why I bring her up is because her videos, while a lot of them are pretty Alistair focused, made me realize that I haven't really done anything that is has been themed on my channel since my friends react videos or even my merch video if you want to stretch it a bit. Everything else, like I said, has been more primarily on Hello a Boss. This also led me to a comment that I received four months ago. I am so sorry this took so long. It was a comment left on my friends react to the Attic music video and the comment said, how about reacting to Alistair's game song from the Living Tombstone? To which I replied, oh, trust me, that's on my list. And they said, okay, can't wait. And good lord, I, again, I'm so sorry that you had to wait this long. <laughs> if you're still around, God bless you, first of all. And second, I hope the wait was worth it. Um, spoiler alert, I, it's probably not. But yes, in addition to fan art and cosplays, we also have a bunch of fan-related music to come out of the Hasman Hotel pilot. The most famous case of this was, of course, Attic, which not only gained a lot of popularity, but also gained the attention of Vivzy Pop herself, which led to it actually being animated into a full music video by the actual animators of the show and was actually sung by Michael Kovach, who is the voice of Angel Dust. So I thought, why not fulfill that comment left long ago and also pay some attention to Hasman Hotel by reacting to Alistair's Game by The Living Tombstone? But then my extra ass thought, you know what? We could do a little more than that. So today, my friends, not only are we going to be reacting to Alistair's Game by The Living Tombstone, we're also going to be reacting to a couple of other Alistair-related fan songs. Besides Alistair's Game, we're also going to be reacting to the song Dealmaker, as well as a song Radio Demon. But before we get into that, of course, we do have to take care of some disclaimers. Disclaimer number one, viewer discretion is advised? Question mark? I add the question mark because I'm personally not sure if the content of these songs are warranting a viewer discretion label. However, considering the work it is deriving from is something I would certainly consider, um, you know, warrants a viewer discretion label. I'm gonna go ahead and give this a viewer discretion label just to cover my tracks, so there you are. Second, I don't own any of the videos I'm going to be reacting to today. I don't own any of the songs. I don't own Alistair or Husband Hotel or any related properties. Those all belong to their respective owners. So if you haven't actually seen these songs slash heard these songs um, already, I definitely suggest watching them on the original channels first and then coming to watch my reactions so that way it'll be a little more enjoyable for you. 
And thirdly, if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to my channel so that way you can be notified every time I upload a new video. Again, not only do I upload has been and Hello Boss related reaction videos, I also upload BTS related content as well as some makeup videos. So yeah, without further ado, let's get into these reactions. I'm also gonna light another candle. I know I lit a candle in my WandaVision makeup collection. I'm not gonna light that one. The, uh, the one I'm gonna light today also from Wicked Wicks, which by the way, Support small businesses. She's my chelsea friend, guys. I love her a lot. Um, this one is a cherry pop. I know he's considered like strawberry pimp or whatever, but you know, cherry strawberries are like cousins. If anything, this one actually it has notes of cherries and strawberry soda. So you know what? This this is on theme. I'm with my, you know, Alistair Frappuccino, which if you haven't seen that on my TikTok, might as well go see it. Literally like a chocolate covered strawberry, like was liquefied. I love it. Alrighty, so first we're gonna start with the Living Tombstones Alistair game, which is probably the most well known of the Alistair fan songs. Okay, now I have never heard anything from the Living Tombstone. The only bit I know of this is like, I think it's the beginning. It's just like, I've got a game I wanna show you. If I told you my name, you had to play to, or something like that. And I only know that because that was on the TikTok where I got the recipe for this guy. But other than that, I know nothing, but based on that, it seems like it's gonna have like, you know, that sort of 1920s, 30s, jazzy swing sound, which I think fits perfectly for Alistair. So yeah. Alrighty, we're gonna get into this first song, which is Alistair's Game, Has Been Hotel Song by The Living Tombstone. We're gonna get started in three, two, one. Ooh, it's like the old timey film. Oh yeah, just like the old timey films, like the title cards, so cute. I got a game, I show you. Yes, this is what I know. You, name, you have to play to. I've been here for years, biding my time. Okay. Already, I really like the singing voice. It's very similar to like his actual speaking voice. Not exact, but like like uh, Gabe, who's the actual singing voice, but very close. I like it. I can tell there's a filter, but you know, it's fine. I do like the little puppet show too. <laughs> little silhouettes. Very cute. <laughs> that face kind of scared me when it popped up. Um, this is very... Yeah, you kind of did though. You kind of did. Um, that was that was um. It's a little out of character. Um, that was a little. Okay, hold on. I like this part. Um, that other part was a little out of nowhere. Oh, uh, hello again. Um, I, I'm a little thrown off by this. It's a little bit of a jarring jump to go from the swing to the metal. Very nice graphic though, it looks cool. I just don't <laughs> um, The lyrics so far from what I've seen actually fit pretty well into the whole deal maker thing. Um Uh, okay. Pleasure to play how I enjoy you. Suffice to say when I play I don't lose. Collect on the depths that you accrue. It was such a gas. I really am you. Have a good thought. I'm right beside you. A casual whisper, just a guy. Oh, I will remember the song, Alistair. I, I most certainly will remember the song. So, um... Oh, okay, so let's start with what I liked. I 
liked the bits with the old timey swing. I think that it really fit into Alistair's character. It seems like the kind of music that he would listen to or sing. The singing voice during the swing parts and like, yeah, I, I call it the swing or like the 20s, 30s sounds, but yeah, the singing voice during it, like I said, very nice. It sounds very close to like when Ed Bosco, who is the voice of Alistair when he's speaking. I, I I would definitely say it's a little closer to that than to Gabriel Brown, who is the actual singing voice for Alistair, but that's not bad by any means. If anything, I, I, can't, I do really like this. The lyrics, like I said, um, from what I could see, they fit really well into the whole like deal making part of him and it kind of plays into that idea of the monkey's paw you know like it, it takes as much as it gives so like there's always a quid for pro or like a genie you know you you get this but there is going to be a cost to it and i feel like that works pretty well considering even though we haven't really seen anything canon wise in terms of alistair and his deal making it's definitely implied upon by baggy and the pilot and by Vivzy Pop herself when she has like talked about it on Honeycast. I also like the visual, like I really love the little film reel kind of thing, like that old timiness. I like the sort of shadow puppet, you know, when he's sort of like talking with the two people that he's making a deal with. I think that was really cute and, you know, kind of clever. And yes, the animation during the, the glitchy bits during the course was also very well done. Speaking of which, uh, let's get to the things that, not that I don't like, but I'm just a little on the fence about. I don't know how to feel about the chorus and the bridge to the song. I, again, I have not listened to anything else by the Living Tombstone before, so I don't know if that's their thing. If they're, if they're like a signature of their songs or their covers or, you know, whatever is sort of metal sound, metal rock sound which if it is the case then you know good for them and it's not bad like from what i can tell but it's a bit jarring i understand though what its purpose is i understand why it's there at least from what i can tell it is sort of in the parts where he's like glitching or doing the glitch stuff if you recall in the pilot when Vaggy's threatening him and he says, oh, like, my dear, if I wanted to hurt anyone here, I would have done so already. And when he says that, he goes like really staticky and the screen's all like, like that, which, you know, it's not necessarily a shock in the pilot though, because a, in that moment, you can sort of tell that something's up with this character, especially considering how much Vaggy is very against him, like even being allowed, not even, not just allowed in the hotel, but like Charlie even opening the door for him. Like literally the first time I saw it, I remember that little moment where he said, you know, my dear, if I wanted to hurt anyone here, and I was just like, I just started doing this because I was just like, oh, I can feel some vibes coming from you, sir. And they're not necessarily all positive vibes. And you can, you can sense it. You can sense like there's a bit of a threat. And so when that happens, it's jarring, but it's not like a jump scare, you know? Like there's, there's a bit of a build to it that you can sort of see coming, but at the same time, you can't really see the degree of it so when it does happen and he's like i would have done so already and you see like all the glitch and the the static noise and everything it's still like oh you know like oh oh okay but it's not like a jump scare in a horror movie this seemed a little more in the realm of a jump scare like a horror movie not to say that i was terrified or anything i was just very surprised because it just there wasn't really a build-up it just jumped from one end of the spectrum which is you know the happy jazzy vibes to ugh, trying to explain this in a way that makes sense um i don't think it's working but oh well we're gonna keep going with it basically my point is that i think that those moments were just a bit too jarring not to mention it happens in every chorus as well as the bridge that's pretty much at least half of the song so i don't know if maybe like the abruptness and the jumping back and forth kind of put me a bit on the fence. Again, that, this is just my personal opinion. Again, I want to reiterate, I do not hate this. I don't even dislike it, but I can in good conscience say I love it either. I would say I'm pretty neutral at the moment. Maybe if I heard it a couple more times, I might gain some fondness for it. I'll be very honest with you and say the first time I heard Addict, I was a little confused as well because of like all the EDM and stuff, but it wasn't until a couple listens later, I was like, you know what? Yeah, I can definitely vibe with this. So yeah, I would say first impression wise, Alistair's game is 
all right. It's it's all right. It's it's cool. It's fine. Whether or not it will join Addict in terms of like, oh yeah, I really really like this song a lot and everything. Time will tell. But for now, I'm pretty neutral on it. What was that? <laughs> I heard a noise. I was just like, <laughs> I was like, Alistair, <laughs> no, you leave me be. I'm drinking your frappuccino, which I'm almost out of. Good lord. All right, so yeah, we're done with Alistair's game. Now let's move on to the second song, which is Deal Maker. So when doing my research for this reaction video, I saw that Deal Maker was one of the ones that people consider to be very good, but also very underrated. So I was very curious to see how this song would play out in comparison to Alistair's game, which is probably the most popular of the Alistair fan songs. So this song is um, by the YouTube channel, The Dish, Dishwasher, sorry, I almost said dishwasher. Um, the dishwasher, but it is credited as by Taito Cat. So let's go ahead and get into this. This is Dealmaker, um, Alistair Song at Taito Cat slash Dishwater. Dishwasher! Ah! <laughs> uh, we're gonna get into it in three, two, one. Is it bad that the first thing that I think of when I hear this is Pokemon? Like the Team Rocket hideout, or like when they take over the radio station. Oh, radio station connection! Okay! <laughs> this actually sounds kind of nice. Yeah, definitely reminds me of that. <laughs> also, kind of reminds me of Undertale a little. Like Hotland, maybe? Listen, dearly, mm -hmm. listen close. You wanna show a Jolie? So, again, good singing voice. Bourgeois. Got some old timey terms, I like it. I'm trying to put the volume in. Oh, I like this! Oh, this is fun! Different kind of swingy sound, but also very nice. And we got some, like, synthesizer accordion. I feel like accordion. I'm trying to read the lyrics too, but so far I like the terms. I like the old timey terms. Smoky Mare, like that. I don't know what that means, but definitely sounds in place, like in line with something Alistair would say, I think. Mm -hmm. I like it. Ooh. I wonder what this is quoting. Reminds me of when Ed read the um the thriller monologue as Alistair. Hmm. We're getting some glitch in. Interesting. Oh my goodness. Oh, I love the sign. I don't know why. Lyrics definitely fall into that sort of deal maker category. Very similar to Alice's game, which I like. Yeah, then. <laughs> Oh, nice. Okay. Vocal and lyrics. Nice. I'm trying to see if there's anything left at the end. You know, I definitely like this one. I like the sort of, um, the way they incorporated that, like, I want to say, like, they, I feel like they incorporated modernness with this one, just a slight bit more flowy, like, in a more 
coherent way. <laughs> I don't want this to turn into like a huge comparison with Alistair's game. So let me just say, like Alistair's game, I really like the old timey sound of it. And I really like the incorporation of old timey slang, which I feel like Def it's definitely something Alistair would say. I and I hope that once uh, more episodes of has been come out, we get to see him use a bit more of like sl slang and terms from his era. Especially considering, according to Vivzy Pop, Alistair seems the type that kind of rejects everything like technologically modern and things that you know came after his time. So yeah, that would definitely be interesting. Now, in terms of this actual song, like the actual instrumentation of it, I actually really like it because like I said, it does kind of remind me of the Pokemon like in Heart, Gold, and Soul Silver, the music that plays when uh, Team Rocket takes over the Goldenrod City, Goldenrod City, right? Uh, radio station, which you know, radio station, they made a little connection. It was on accident though. But yeah, the little boop, 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 and like, I, I feel like that kind of incorporated like a little bit of that modern sound, but not completely taking over the old timey sound. I, like it seemed like a nice little blend right there, but it was definitely more firmly in the, you know, 1920s, 1930s kind of sound. This one did also include a little bit of an allusion to, you know, Alistair's glitchy, like staticky moment from the pilot in that in this case, it happened during the bridge. And the reason why I think I like it better here than in Alistair's game, one, because of the fact that they did just isolate it to one moment, but two, because in this moment, he wasn't actually singing, he was talking. And I said it kind of reminded me of during that one request from Honey Caswin, Ed, who is the speaking voice of Alistair, read the Thriller monologue in Alistair's voice, but also when he read um, some quotes from the Haunted Mansion, like the ghost host in Alistair's voice, and even, yes, uh, him quoting the Willy Wonka tunnel scene from hell in Alistair's voice. See, man, they, man, we really make him say a lot of things in Alistair's voice, don't we? But my point is, I, I feel like it kind of alludes to that sort of like, you know, how he sounds when he's talking, like, again, you know, I would have done so already, with a little bit of that music in the background, and I like how it kept building up, like, it started with him talking kind of soft, but it just kept kind of going bigger and like a little more, you know, I don't want to say deeper, but you know like more menacing more threatening a little like bigger until of course we get that little moment when angel just like he looks like a strawberry pimp which i was not expecting that at all <laughs> i i like this one yes i do like it a little better than alice's game so far but i do like both songs um so yeah so far deal maker pretty good Alrighty, so now um we are going to take a look at um <laughs> So for those of you who don't know, which is probably all of you because I don't think I've actually mentioned it on my channel before, I used to be a huge fan of Nate Wants the Battle. I used to watch a lot of his like Let's Plays and I loved his covers, like especially his Steven Universe covers. I thought they were amazing. I think my favorite one was the Stronger Than You cover. It was just chef's kiss. Mwah. If I had to point out a moment in time where I actually stopped listening to stuff, it might have been a little after he started making his own music, which is not the reason I stopped being a fan, by the way. I just found other interests and some of my older interests just kind of got swept under the rug. Nate, unfortunately, was one of them, which I feel very bad about because I genuinely really liked his original music too. He actually made uh, a song called Phantom, which actually came up in my search results when I was searching for like Alistair related fan songs. It's like the one that pops up, it says Phantom, Alistair song. That was the only one I actually listened to to make sure because I have heard Phantom already even though it's been a little while since the last time I heard it. But yeah, it's just Phantom with some Alistair animation. So I didn't really consider that one for this video because I've already heard Phantom. But I will say I like Phantom. I, I just want to make that very clear. I do like Phantom. But anyway, my point is that in this research, yes, I saw the Phantom and I was like, okay, that's not an actual Alistair fan song. However, he did make a Alistair fan song and it is called Radio Demon and that's the one we're going to react to. Now, while it has been a while since I've actually listened to anything that Nate has done, I am already excited because the stuff that I have heard from Nate, like I said, I've always really loved. And two, I did see that the top comment was from Vizzy Pop herself and she said, so cool. So I'm like, okay, the creator approves. So that makes this all the more um, exciting to me. Alrighty, we're gonna get into this last song. This is Radio Demon by Nate Wants to Battle. We're gonna get started in three, Two, one.
Animation's really good. <laughs> like the lyrics a lot. Nate's singing is impeccable as always. How did I fall off the wagon? And if I'm correct, that's also Nate on guitar because he, of course he knows how to play guitar really well and it sounds awesome. Oh no, I really like this one. Oh, I like this build. Oh no. Oh, this is some good guitar. Oh no! <laughs> I feel bad after everything. I I really like this, you guys. <laughs> I love the solo of Charlie and Baggy, by the way. This is this is really good. Define R O I in applied operations in medical terms oh return on investment or return on cost is a ratio between net income and investment a high roi means the investment's gains compare favorably to its costs as a performance measure roi is used to evaluate the efficiency of an investment or to compare the efficiency of several different investments oh so this is about him investing in a hotel i get it now I understand. So I really like that. <laughs> and I know what you're gonna say, but Carla, you literally just spent like God knows how much time shit talking Alistair's game for having the metal rock sound. And now you're saying you really like Radio Demon, even though the whole song is metal rock sounding. <laughs> And to that I say, well, there's your answer right there. The whole song is that kind of sound. Again, my problem with Alistair's game was the fact that it kept jumping between sounds in a very jarring way. I like Dealmaker because it kept the swing 1920s, 30s song all the way through. And I like this one, even though it has a rock sound but it has it all the way through. It's consistent. I think that's my main thing, is the consistency. And so that's probably why I can accept this one a little more, because this song doesn't... Okay, I don't want to say it doesn't seem like Alistair singing it, because the lyrics are very, 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 very good. And they're very, 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 not only in line with the whole deal-making motif that Alistair has, 
but it also derives a lot from the pilot itself. It, it, and not only does it have like Charlie and Baggy's silhouette as visual as though Alistair's actually talking to them, but you can tell that like in the song, he is actually speaking to them. It's not like with Alistair's game in Dealmaker, where he's just sort of broadly speaking to you about how he can make a deal with you and how, you know, inevitably that deal will probably go wrong. This se it seems much more like Alistair specifically talking to Charlie and Baggy about making a deal with them in regards to the hotel and you know becoming a sponsor and helping them run it and how possibly because again we don't really know for sure how this deal would kind of go wrong. I say possibly for two reasons. One because of the fact that in the pilot they never actually do make a deal. Charlie kind of stops him in his tracks is like no no deal making. How about I as princess order you um, to do it and since you are technically one of my subjects you kind of have to and he's just like I'm all right for a game you know whatever but also because of the fact that outside of the actual pilot you know Vivzy Pop herself has said that while she did intend in like earlier drafts for Alistair to be the villain as of now he's more of like a Cheshire Cat character he's here to cause mischief and to mess around with things but he's not necessarily the big bad He's just more like, I'm a fuck with you because I think it's funny. So that's sort of where the song kind of derives from the original work in that, besides the sound of course, it does kind of take the path of, oh yeah, were Alistair to make a deal with Charlie, he would screw her over. Or at least that is what it is implying as far as I could tell from the lyrics. But I like it. I, I don't know if I mentioned this, but something I really like seeing um, in terms of like Alistair whether it's like canon, but also fan work stuff, as much as like his charismatic side is also his menacing side. Some of my favorite, you know, requests that Ed Bosco has been given on the Honeycast haven't really been so much like the, you know, charismatic flirty stuff, but more so moments where he gets to be threatening and menacing and scary and creepy. I don't know, I just find it like really fascinating. So here we have a song where we actually do get a bit of that and I feel like it actually works pretty well with the instrumentation of and the genre of music. Which again makes me sound like a total hypocrite because I had that, that was my issue with Alice's Game. But again, not so much of the sound in Alice's Game, but more so the fact that if we're going to derive in terms of genre of music, at least it's maintaining consistency. That's why I like Dealmaker too, is because, you know, it kept the same song consistent. And while it did have its glitchy moment, that was more in the bridge and it was more of a speaky moment. Also, I would be lying if I said I don't like rock kind of sounding music or like, you know, pop punk or whatever you want to call it. I did say I was a fan of Nate in the day and I probably will become a fan again. This takes me back. But yeah, no, I, I, I really like this song a lot. I'm sorry if it makes me sound really hypocritical, but I just, I just, I just really like it a lot. <laughs> also, if I can mention not only Nate's incredible singing, but also his voice acting, like, Oh my gosh, okay, did he sound exactly like Ed Bosco as Alistair? No, did he sound exactly like Gabriel Brown when he talks as Alistair? Actually, he did kind of remind me of Gabe when he uh, he tries to do Alistair's speaking voice, but wow, that was, that was crazy. I was like, oh my gosh, that is awesome. So Nate, kudos to you. Again, chef's kiss, Mwah. Mwah. all the chef kisses. <laughs> I would say if I had to rank them, definitely, this would probably be my favorite, and then Dealmaker, and then Alistair's Game. But if I were to rank them in how accurate I think they are to the character, I might put Dealmaker above this one in ter because of like in terms of sound, and you know it also because of the fact that that one did use a lot more of the old timey like or the era appropriate lingo that Alistair would be more familiar with, considering he's from the 20s and 30s. Which again is something I did like from Alistair's Game is the lyrics. I would say that that one actually um, has a lot more in common with Dealmaker uh, Alistair's Game in terms of lyrical content where it is morally just uh, in terms of him being charismatic as a deal maker. Whereas this one, you can definitely tell it's more of like plot driven. And again, you know, detailing back to that ROI thing, you know, return of investment. So yeah. Well, there you guys go. That was my reactions to three Alistair fan songs, Alistair's Game, Dealmaker, and Radio Demon. And yes, for all my griping and moaning of certain ones, I can honestly say I did actually enjoy all three of them to varying degrees. And while I do kind of prefer some over the others, 
I wouldn't say I actually hated any of them. I wouldn't even say I disliked any of them. I just do have my slight preferences, but like I said, in terms of something like Alice's Game, with a couple more lessons to it, it might even like rise up in the ranks and end up somewhere like, you know, Addict did. Again, uh, when I first listened to Addict, I wasn't that crazy over it, but you know, now I love it. So only time will tell with that, but for now, that's gonna be the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like, comment in the comment section below. Let me know which of the three was your favorite. Was it Alice's Game, Dealmaker, or Radio Demon, and why? Also, leave me any suggestions for other has been or hell of a themed um, fan songs that you want me to react to. Yes, I also have got a comment about Vox's power glove or something like that. And yes, that is also on the list. I promise I'm not gonna take too long with that one. But to be fair, BTS is gonna release a new Japanese album soon. So yeah. Yeah, that, that, that's gonna, yeah, that's gonna definitely take priority on some things too, but you know, uh, I will do my best to schedule accordingly. And definitely subscribe for more. You can watch my last video right up here. It was my review of the Ulta WandaVision makeup collection. I'm not gonna tell you what I thought of that. You're just gonna have to watch the video to find out. But, um, <laughs> if my, um, slightly unconvincing laughter isn't enough of a hint, well, <laughs> I don't know what will be. I got to wear my WandaVision cape though and light a candle, so that was fun. Or if you'd like to see something else that's has been or Hell of a Boss related, I did do a reaction for episode four of Hell of a Boss Assured, which you can watch right up there as well. I will also be leaving links to my social medias in the description. You can follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. Loki, I will also be leaving links to Lysak and her social media so you can check her out if you are also a fan of Alistair the Radio Dear Daddy. Um, definitely check her out because she's awesome. I genuinely, I mean it when I say that her stuff made me want to do something Alistair related on my channel, but I am not talented in cosplay whatsoever. And if you did see the um, episode four reaction for a uh, hell of a boss then you saw my terrible Alistair impression so yeah that just goes to show my stuff would not measure up to hers however I mean it when I say that she deserves a lot of love and support so definitely check her out thanks again so much for watching you guys I hope you have a great rest of your day and I will see you in the next video I'm out of frappuccino now it's so good but so cold <laughs> bye guys I can like smell it. Woo! <laughs> Here we go. Whoa, the wax. Ooh, that was an accident. I did not mean to do that. Okay, we're just gonna put you here and hope that I don't accidentally burn the house down. <laughs>